Next story. MiamiHerald.com. Neighbors complain of flogging screams. Florida balloon law has unforeseen consequences. Leonidas Lysander. Three to four minutes. Florida's recent ban on balloon releases, signed into law by Governor Pigpen DeSantis, has led to a series of unintended and disturbing consequences. The legislation, initially praised by environmentalists for its potential to protect wildlife, has unexpectedly ensnared a significant number of otherwise law abiding citizens. Unable to afford the hefty fines or take time off work for prison sentences, many have reluctantly opted for flogging as an alternative punishment. This, without fully reckoning the agony such punishments entail. The once quiet neighborhoods surrounding jails and public squares are now filled with the anguished howls of those being flogged, a punishment that is not only painful but also shattering to communal peace. Traditionally conducted in public for maximum deterrent effect, these floggings have disrupted recreational activities and generated widespread complaints of a general breach of the peace. I can't enjoy a simple afternoon in my garden without being assailed by the screams from the jail next door, said Margaret Thompson, a resident of a neighborhood adjacent to a local La security detention center. It's unbearable and deeply unsettling. I've never heard such howls, such outraged and desperate pleading. The cries must carry for miles. The state's initial intent to create a more orderly and business-friendly environment, by banning balloon releases has backfired spectacularly. The sheer volume of offenders, choosing flogging over fines or incarceration, has overwhelmed the state's capacity to administer this punishment. The shortage of trained individuals capable of competently wielding the whip has only exacerbated the problem. Flogging is mostly a lost art, explained Peter Charles Damien, a Tritarian friar and itinerant flogging consultant from Tallahassee. There are very few of us left to keep the traditions alive. The brothers and I retire each day exhausted, having administered thousands of strokes to convicts over the course of a typical day, he said, as despairing screams echoed in the courtyard around him, and the job can't be handed off to amateurs. The strokes must be administered with measured force to precise areas of the back, or the convict could be disfigured or seriously injured. The state's inability to manage the sheer number of floggings, has also raised concerns about the effectiveness and humaneness of this form of punishment. Human rights advocates are alarmed at the resurgence of such a brutal practice, and many citizens are questioning the wisdom of a policy that leads to such widespread public distress. The lashing and wailing is constant, and it's affecting my children's sleep and mental health, said Javier Martinez, another resident. This was supposed to be a quiet and safe neighborhood, but now it's like living next to a medieval torture chamber. Meanwhile, Retired federal judge Kennesaw Mountain Landis is delighted that his recent pronouncements on the need for the mortification of the flesh in civil society have been heeded. We have turned aside from the rocks of shamelessness and iniquity and have set course toward a shining virtuous future, he said in a phone interview. As complaints mount, the state government is scrambling to find a solution. Some have suggested reverting to fines or finding alternative punishments such as forced marches or limb amputations. Others advocate for more stringent regulations on flogging practices, perhaps limiting the number of strokes per session so that the descent into agony and despair never reaches the point where pleading and involuntary cries are elicited. But Governor Pigpen DeSantis bridles at any such changes in the law, stating simply, this is Sparta. As Florida grapples with this unexpected fallout, the balance between enforcement, public order, and humane treatment remains a contentious and evolving issue. For now, the screams of mortification continue to pierce the air in the state's towns and cities, a stark reminder of the complex interplay between legislation and its real-world impacts.